What if he just started making TikToks? TikTok is wild. Do you think TikTok is going to die? I was thinking about the lifespan of YouTube and how many things platforms have come and go. Do you think TikTok is going to be one of them? I was thinking about its search capabilities and like. Shitty. Yeah, search is very bad. Um, it's quite addicting, but like I had a moment on there one time. And I was like, I want to have discoverability like YouTube. I was like, I would like a, a feed of stuff. And it kind of has a feed, but it's not very cool. YouTube, like even mobile YouTube interface, it feeds you stuff and you're like, you can kind of binge on it. And it doesn't feel so draining as TikTok, man. I feel, yeah, I feel like everybody on YouTube, I mean, sorry, on TikTok, has like a complimentary YouTube on the side. Like, yeah, go check out my blog, go check yeah. out my side business. But it's not the other way around. For people, YouTube is enough. Yeah, definitely that too. Everyone was like, yo, go on my other thing. Um, I don't know. Uh, right now, I kind of lean like it. it's... it's um, its lifespan will probably not be super long lasting. I also think that because its rise was pretty fast as well. And usually that goes hand in hand with with cycles of everything. The secret. Um, just make something a little different. Make the algorithm killer. And whatever you do, don't sell to Mark Zuckerberg. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I mean... Wasn't YouTube a tweak of something before? We talked about it recently. Yeah, kind of. It was a dating site. Okay. But YouTube was also like revolutionary, like in its own lane, being that it was the first time users could easily upload videos and share videos online. Good timing with new technology. Yeah, YouTube is like, I'm learning so much about youtube and like how it works i think of it like think of it like a really really dumb like dog or really dumb baby or something just stupid and then you upload a video to it and the only thing it knows about this video is how long it is it doesn't know what it's about like it might know like your location but most likely not probably doesn't have a lot of audio data yet um <clears throat> and so when somebody clicks on it, like let's say somebody sees it in their subscription box or they see it on your channel page or they type it in, they click on it, that gives YouTube one data point. And they're like, okay, Ricker clicked on this. Here's a list of everything he likes. So this video might be about one of these things because Ricker's watching it. Oh, he's watching 70% of it. It's most likely about one of these things because if he's watching most of the video, he's into it. Okay. Oh, he left a like. Oh, he's commenting. He's really into the video. I'm going to start showing this video to Bond because Bond's also into the same stuff. So it's kind of just guessing. And then the more people like fulfill like or give it information about who might watch it, the better the algorithm gets better at recommending to people. And that's how viral videos are born, basically. Do you know what that process is called? Like from a tech perspective? I, I don't. I typed in, like, neural network is the first thing that popped in my mind, but I don't think it's, like, deep learning. I think it might just be algorithmic stuff, but, like... Um, yeah, it's it's wild. It's so, like, I've heard tricks, like, if you, when you upload a video, if you have, like, three or four other accounts and you get on those accounts and watch the video all the way through, like the video and comment, mm -hmm. and then get on your main account, that you uploaded the video on respond to all those comments that like gives the algorithm a jump start like okay this has some early engagement and let me start throwing it out to more people well, would it throw it out to similar channels of the commented chan of the commenting channels or just right? yeah the, the channels that are watching it and then i learned that like in order the best way for it to know if a video is similar to another video for recommended if you watch the video and then you click to another video that's similar to it so like you watch two tennis videos and then you watch like a good portion of the second video it's gonna know it's gonna have a better idea okay the first video was like the same as the second video most likely because they just click straight to it cool yeah. i do think this is called 
deep neural networks. Um, yeah, <laughs> there's a there's a research Google paper. They're probably they're, at some point in in YouTube's history, they're like, yo, we we're gonna plot out how people interact with things and what they like, and then they're gonna make it better. I bet they tried some shit really didn't work in the early days and they tried a bunch of stuff and like they're like okay like we're having the most engagement because at the end of the day youtube just wants your eyeballs to stay on youtube.com for longer so they can serve you more ads and i have reason to believe that if you're not monetized they're less likely to promote your channel because they have less to gain from a non-monetized channel makes sense in the game theory so it's really hard to well, I'm not gonna say it's really hard because like you could you could you could do it easily if you like pick the right thing, or you could do it however you want and like take five years to grow on YouTube. As but, with most AI systems, YouTube AI is sophisticated and YouTube has released only limited information about it. They did a white paper in 2016 and clarified some details, but most of the information on the algorithm is still very secret. We know from the white paper that this place, by the way gives a 404 but there might be you know do google lol um the viewers perceive satisfaction to create an addictive personalized stream of recommendations it works to determine how satisfied slash happy a viewer is with each video they play and then tailor future recommendations to try and increase level of satisfaction satisfaction probably equals watch time most importantly Effectively, two neural networks in use to first filter videos to decide what would make a good match for the viewer's next up recommendations. Second neural network gives each video a score based on the range of factors not yet publicly known. Which, I mean, how many factors exist on YouTube? Watch time, interactions, uh, maybe positive comments. But, like, do you, do you, when's the last time you commented on a video organically? Uh, I don't know. Sometimes I do. I never. Unless it's like I'm supporting that person. Which Sometimes I ask like a question. I wouldn't do I mean do people get back to you? Yeah. Okay. Actually more than you would think. I mean, that's that's kinda people running channels probably should get back to people commenting. I feel like if you're not answering comments, it's not because you have too many comments, it's just because you don't want to. Because you can read like 15,000 comments in 10 minutes. Yeah, some people probably is not there in the wheelhouse. Yeah, um, but also, responding to comments is good for the algorithm too. Intended to suggest videos that the particular viewer would watch. Very cool. Google and algorithms, man. So that's what I was kind of wondering too. Like in the future, in the media, is there eventually Google might have to die? I don't know. Maybe not. Do technologies always die? Uh, yes, but maybe we're in a new form of technology. I mean, eventually the earth blows up. Technology might die. I, um, think, I think one day Google will die, but it'll be like... Like Google's dominating the internet. It needs to be the successor to the internet, whatever that's going to be. Yeah. A new technology has to come. And even then, older technologies, it's a slow, slow death. <laughs> like, it could be like a company totally different from Google search. And then one day the company is just like, we're going to make an, an advertising internet business and they do it way better than Google. And instantly they're a competitor to Google because that's where Google's money comes from. <clears throat> I'm thinking from the perspective of, is it possible to have not a dominant centralized, sorry for always the decentralized centralized jargon, but a non-company dominated advertising platform because most people use Google and Facebook uh, for ads because that has the most data, big data, and it's kind of easy. Um, but those are still centralized companies. And if there's future incentives for people to make technology that is not a centralized advertising hub, and that goes back to less middlemen and Web3 stuff. This is the whole talk I wanted to have on a, <laughs> on a blockchain.